Well, that's the news. And thanks for stopping by. The Herd Lie News. Let's welcome him in. He's my buddy, Fox Sports Radio, after our show. I, I want to hear his opinion. We got all sorts of hurt point guards. Doug Gottlieb. Gottlieb was a gamer. Gottlieb played through pain. Gottlieb's a tough guy. Okay, let, let's just start. So, so let, inaccurate. I was actually never hurt, but that's okay. That's like, well, you're tough. You're sturdy. <laughs> sure. You are sturdy. Yes. Okay, you're just, sinewy. I'm sturdy. Yes. Okay, so let's play the Tony Parker thing. Greg, do we have that? So this is Tony Parker at the San Antonio, uh, you know, facility. He had the same injury as Kawhi Leonard. Okay, let's play the tape, and then Doug will respond to it. Go ahead. I've been through it. It was a rehab for me, too, for eight months, you know, so uh, same kind of injury. Uh, my mind was a uh, hundred times worse, but the same kind of injury, and uh, just try to stay positive. I could have gone anywhere, but uh, I trust my Spurs doctors. They've been with me, you know, my whole career. They know my body better than anybody. I feel like we have the best uh, medical team uh, in the world. Dude. What? What, well, dude? You just said what? Did you say a hundred times worse? <laughs> and then you went into infomercial mode, right? Then he went into, then he went to, I could have gone anywhere, but I chose our doctors. And here's why, right? Um, I, I can't believe what I heard from Tony Parker. I, I cannot, you know, it's like in life, you don't, you don't tell people how to, how to raise their kids. Right. You don't tell people how to pray, right. you know? Yeah. And, in this, and I don't think you should tell people how to spend their money. Same thing in the, in the NBA. Don't talk about my, my personal life. Don't talk about how I spend my money. And please don't tell me whether or not I'm hurt or not hurt, good, especially good when you're my teammate. Good rule. And then, and then to say it was 100 times worse? You, you simply could have said, I had the same injury. My experience with our physicians was... They did everything they could to get me back on the court, and I got back on the court, and I'm fine. By the way, you lost your starting job when you came back. Failed to mention that part. So whether or not that's because of age and because DeJounte Murray's just a better player than you at this point, whatever you came back as, it's now the backup point guard of the San Antonio Spurs. You have an interesting relationship. I, I, I don't know exactly, but you knew – you. I remember leaning on you with Kawhi Leonard in college – didn't you have a brother, somebody coach somebody who no, knew? No, no, no. Well, my, uh, my brother recruited him when he was first at San Diego State, and then he was at yes, Cal. Yes, yes, And remember- well, what it, do you make of this Kawhi thing? I, I make of it as, as this is the beginning of the end of their relationship. Okay. You, right? You simply, I mean, like, look, there's, there's lots of personal relationships to which you don't air it publicly. Of Once course. you do, it's <laughs> over. You're, it, it's over. Right. You start saying Kawhi Leonard's soft. That's what he said. Kawhi Leonard's soft. Yeah. We think Kawhi Leonard's soft. By the way, as Steven Jackson said earlier, Kawhi is not an idiot. He knows that comes from pop. Of course. Of course. It, you know, you have your you kind of have your henchman, right? Sure, and you sure. have your henchman, and now they're going in front of the camera. The week before, it was Manu Ginobili saying he's not coming back, right? You have all of the longtime Spurs lining up, guy after guy falling in line with the propaganda that the San Antonio Spurs want. And whether or not it's a reality that that the doctors think he can play and the players think he can It doesn't matter. You don't ever say that publicly. You just don't. And what's, I think, even more fascinating is, kind of like the New England Patriots, is we're seeing a team that does such a great job of keeping everything quiet suddenly not deal with a very public story. Well, th th this, I, this has always been my thing, or Phil Jackson would do this. If the downside of being smart, and there's very few downsides, you'd want to be smart. The downside is you can't conveniently play stupid. Bill Belichick, tape? I have no, I never, I don't even know where the footballs are. Okay, Phil Jackson would say, I, I, you know. Okay, they have been the most covert NBA team. Now, they're like Ellen. It's like a talk show every day. Like, suddenly, suddenly San Antonio players are glib and talking about injuries, which, by the way, they would never talk about before. It's Ever. clearly a message top-down to make Kawhi look bad. No, and I'm sure Tony and Ginobili, they're ticked because they think, hey, this is a year. You look at Golden State, they're all banged up. We think that if we're healthy, we can beat Houston. Yep. Why do we think that? We beat them last year right. and we weren't healthy. Right. We, we, don't believe, we think they don't play defense. We think they're soft. They're not a playoff team. We got a chance at one last run at a championship, and this dude's saying he's injured when he's really hurt. Like, is, there's a difference between injury. If you're hurt, get back out on the floor. If you're injured, go see the trainer. We'll let us know when you're just hurt right. and ready to play. Uh, I'm, I'm sure you're frustrated, but you can't air it publicly. And like you said, Kawhi's not stupid. And, and they believe that money is the ultimate motivator, right? Because only San Antonio can sign him to the Supermax. Right. So they're sitting there going like, what's he going to do? Leave and leave all that money on the table? They're challenging kind of the manhood and the toughness of Kawhi Leonard. And that's kind of his DNA. Yes. And, and it, you bring up the point of my brother is, 
my brother was when Mike Montgomery got the job at Cal. Yeah. Um, he got he had been in the NBA and he'd been broadcasting and he said, "All right, we need to go get a big man." My brother said, "Yes, we do need a big man. I'm going to take you to Riverside ML, MLK High School." Yeah. And um, and we're going to see a, a guy you have to sign, and his name's Kawhi Leonard. And we go in the gym, and he's a six foot six center. He's like, "That's great, I love him, but he's a six foot six center. He can't play center in the Pac-12 right. at six foot six. Yeah. No, no, trust me, he'll be a four. Eventually, he'll be a three. Nobody in the Pac-12 offered him a scholarship. They end up they end up taking a guy named Bach Bach instead of taking Kawhi Leonard. Yeah, and it's just because traditionally six foot ten, six foot eleven works yeah. in the Pac-12, and he goes to to San Diego State, eventually develops his game, has become better than anybody thought uh, he'd yeah, become. Kawhi, Kawhi but, it, a- but it's because of his, his toughness. It's because of his competitiveness. Hell, he's player of the year in the state of California, and he still holds a chip on his shoulder. He wasn't McDonald's All-American because <laughs> he was a six six center yeah. in high school. So I think all of this is his makeup, and I think it's going to pull him away from San Antonio. Yeah, that's interesting. So um, here's the thing. Like, I think I love LeBron. I think you do too. But, you know, I'm not going to deny that he can be, you know, a little cryptic, a little message sender. So he's had the best month in his life. And I do think it comes not so coincidentally when Kyrie's hurt and Ty has got a chest pains. Like, every month of his career, he is now absurd. Could I not make the argument, Doug, this is kind of par for LeBron's course, which maybe he's bored, a little inauthentic, but he's a message sender. He's sending a message to somebody. I'm not sure if I have it right. He's sending a message, right? Oh, I, I don't think there's any doubt there's a message being sent, but I think it's the same message he sent when Steph Curry was the unanimous MVP. When he said, look, Steph's had... New- remember, remember, everybody kind of got, got his words all twisted. And he said accurately, Steph Curry's had an amazing season and essentially said he's had the best season. But when it comes to value... I don't know. I don't know exactly how I would evaluate value and what I do for this team. Yeah. Now everybody's saying. I've heard people say it's it's James Harden is the MVP. End of story. And he's like, really? End of story? <laughs> okay. Here's a little bit of part of the story. And the well, you can't win big because you don't have a secondary score. And I actually think there's a little bit of a message there to Ty Lue. Remember, they got into it before, you know, verbally in terms of his shot selection. I, I think he likes to be challenged. Yes. Michael Jordan used to do this, where they find different reasons to go to work every day. Sure. Why else for 15 years would you keep coming out and kicking tail every day? Right. And, and here's why. Uh, the, to me, yesterday, in addition to obviously finding the last two teams in the Final Four, yesterday was the greatest symbol of what LeBron James is in the NBA. If you watched both of these games, because LeBron... Thoroughly and completely dominated this game physically. Plus, he's shown the added skill to make a three-pointer when he needs to. He's improved as a shooter. And then you watch Carmelo Anthony in the nightcap. And I don't know if you watched Oklahoma City, but Carmelo Anthony looked washed up. Yeah. They came out the same draft class. Yeah. Okay, Carmelo Anthony is a year older, okay, but... Their bodies are completely dissimilar now because LeBron has always taken care of his instrument as opposed to Carmelo Anthony. Sometimes during the offseason, he loses weight and he's hoodie mellow and he gets in shape, whereas LeBron has taken it very seriously, been the most professional of these professionals. And at 15 years, he's still arguably the best or second best player in the league as opposed to Carmelo Anthony, who's maybe the third best player on the Oklahoma City Thunder. One, two, maybe fourth? Probably. Steven Adams today? Probably. Yeah, I'd say four. I said maybe. I, I, it was, <laughs> it, it, I, I properly used the semantics of maybe. Can you come back or do you have to get to... No, I'm good. Do you have to drive to Sherman Oaks or can you come back? Sherman Oaks, I'm okay. Okay. I'm going to bring Gottlieb back. I, I, I worry wow, about Wow, I get to call this like Johnny. Bring me over to the couch. I love that. <laughs> Okay. All right. Gottlieb will return. You never turn down free money, right? Well, if you're shopping online without the best coupons... You're giving away free money. There is a free browser extension called Honey that automatically finds the best coupons on the web while you shop. Doesn't matter if it's a big screen TV or pizza. So it saves you money while you're doing all your stuff shopping. Two clicks, that's it. You add it to a browser, and it doesn't cost anything. It's free. Over 7 million people use it. Millions of millions of dollars saved over the course of a year. And what Honey does is scan and test coupons in the background while you're doing your online shopping. Over 7 million people have used it. Don't overpay. Money to be saved. Honey's got your back. Right now, get it for free. You got to go to joinhoney.com slash herd. Joinhoney.com slash H-E-R-D. Two clicks, that's it. 
You add Honey to any browser, you do it today, and you do it for free. Join Honey.com slash Herd.